be replacing it with the newly created Foreign Commonwealth and Development Office. Now, concerns have been surrounding the UK's foreign policy and how the country is redefining what constitutes aid to the development to the to the development countries. Rather, earlier today, Ben Snowden, UK's Deputy High Commissioner to Rwanda, sat down with our colleague Ethan Tashobia for an interview to outline a few details about the UK's foreign aid policy. And he kicked off the interview, asking him about the future of UK's International Development Corporation following the closure of DFID? Well, uh, firstly, I'd, I'd probably not want to suggest that DFID has closed mm. as such. Uh, we now have the Foreign Commonwealth and Development Office, mm. a new government ministry, uh, which, is, um, which is coming to force as of today, which is a merger between uh, DFID and the Foreign and Commonwealth Office. Uh, and the new FCDO will absolutely have development at its heart. Um, and at the heart of our foreign policy. Um, the UK has the third biggest development budget in the world and world-class expertise in development. Mm. And our commitment to our, our world-class development programs around the world and in Rwanda uh, remains as, as strong as ever, uh, as does our commitment to spending 0.7% of gross national income on development around the world. Mm -hmm. How will the new international development program improve the UK's foreign policy? Of course. Well, the Prime Minister set his vision out in June for the creation of the FCDO. And it really is to bring together and harness the diplomatic and development expertise that we have uh, to be more than the sum of their parts. I think there have been a number of uh, issues which uh, are not easy to class as foreign policy or as development um, because they encompass both. Um, so it's really to bring together that range of skills, expertise, um, that we have in our diplomatic and development cadres and to use it to uh, ensure that we have a greater impact uh, on the world stage on important global matters uh, and to ensure that the UK continues to um, have a voice of influence mm. uh, and to build and maintain partnerships um, with countries like Rwanda um, to ensure that we can, uh, we can deliver for, for mutual, uh, mutual benefit. Mm -hmm. uh, you've talked about Rwanda uh, twice now so far in this interview and uh, are we going to see a shift in the UK's uh, partnership with developing countries like Rwanda? The UK has been and continues to be a, a world leader in development. I mentioned the expertise that we have uh, and the commitment to, to the world-class programs that we operate around the world um, and uh, I think that is going to continue so I wouldn't suggest it was uh, a shift as such more a continuation of some of the some of the excellent work that's been happening um, a couple of examples to maybe um, uh, bring it to life really would be uh, the UK's response to the COVID-19 crisis um, and the delivery of a successful uh, UK-Africa investment summit in January of this year. Um, both uh, matters that we've worked very closely with the government of Rwanda on, for example, uh, both are very different, uh, but both are real examples of where, when we bring our diplomatic and development skills together, uh, what we can achieve. Mm. Um, so I wouldn't suggest a, a shift as such, um, and I certainly would want to reiterate that the UK commitment to supporting Rwanda's uh, long-term path to um, peace and stability um, and to move away from dependence on aid uh, remains absolutely steadfast as well. So how is the closing of the FID, or rather the formation of, of the Foreign Commonwealth and Development Office related to Brexit? Is there any relationship? Uh, I, I don't think there's any, any link really. Um, as you know, the UK uh, population voted to uh, depart from the European Union mm -hmm. back in 2016. Um, so I think they are quite different, different matters uh, in that regard. However, I think it would be uh, obviously fair to say that the new FCDO will be operating in the context of Brexit. Um, so there will be some, some Brexit kind of challenges uh, and opportunities that face the new department. One of them particularly uh, on trade. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, uh, I guess uh, an area that the new FCDO will be working very closely with our Department for International Trade colleagues will be around those trade relations uh, that we have after we depart the European Union. Mm. Um, again, Rwanda being one of those uh, where negotiations are ongoing. Um, I'm very pleased to say that uh, Rwanda will continue to receive duty-free and quota-free access to UK markets as mm. well, which is fantastic. So, uh, how has COVID-19 disrupted UK's uh, foreign policy? 
Um, I think COVID-19 has had an impact on, on all uh, global countries' foreign mm. policies, uh, it's fair to say. Um, but I don't think necessarily uh, for, for the negative in terms of where we come out. Um, obviously, it's a, it's a global crisis, uh, one which is hitting uh, economies hard um, uh, and, and having a, a really uh, devastating impact. But like I said, in terms of the UK response, um, it's one where we've really been able to, like I said, combine our development and diplomatic uh, skills and expertise. Um, so this uh, looks at the, uh, uh, the money uh, that the UK have uh, put towards tackling the virus, containing the virus, searching for a new vaccine, which is um, over £760 million. Yeah. Um, but also the range of diplomatic efforts um, uh, in, in the UN and other multilateral fora to tackle the virus. So uh, it has certainly changed perspectives, um, but I think it's helped bring some of our uh, foreign policy closer together. Mm. As we close this, what should your development partners know uh, from the newly formed uh, uh, development, Foreign and Commonwealth Development Office? Uh, what should development partners know? Uh, that's a good question. Um, I think the main message would be one of, of reassurance uh, and commitment. Um, uh, we see this as a real opportunity um, for the UK, like I said, on a global stage and uh, to maintain and build those relations with partners. Um, and development, as I said, will absolutely be at the heart of our foreign policy decision making um, and our commitments to our, our programmes and to our 0.7% uh, absolutely remain vital. So uh, I think it's, um, it's a positive development um, and one that we look forward to working very closely with colleagues and with partners on. Ben Snowden, Deputy British High Commissioner to Rwanda, thank you so much for your time indeed. Thanks very much. I appreciate it.